What's up, you guys? What's up, divas? What's up, devos? It's your girl, April. Whew. Listen, first of all, not a really good day. Not a good day at all. It's Tuesday. This is going to be the second time that I had to redo this video. Um, I tried to record it with my phone, and I guess because I had it in 4K, it's not transferring over to my computer. It's just really getting on my last damn nerve. I've been sitting there for like two hours trying to do this. Um, and in the midst of it, I tried to take off my lashes or they were coming off. Listen, it's a whole mess. What I really want to do is a voiceover for this. And that's probably what's going to happen. Um, because I look like a goddamn mess now. Um, it's Tuesday evening. It's 9.04 in the evening. You know this video has to go up, so I don't even really want to be too long. Um, we're just going to jump right into this for this time around. And I do apologize if I'm coming off as moody, but listen, I've had a very long day. Monday, you know, was Memorial Day, and I didn't get a chance to record Real Talk. Today, I was looking for a bicycle um, at the stores because I did order one from Walmart for a pickup and was supposed to be ready today at two uh, after 12. You know, I paid them for the bike price and for the putting it together. It was for myself because my fat ass wanted a bike because I was ready to exercise on a bike, you know, ride around in the neighborhood because my feet be hurting. Well, I hate Walmart because I just do. And they're going to text me after 12 talking about your order has been canceled because it's out of stock. Y'all knew that they was out of stock. So why the fuck do y'all keep selling something that's out of stock? I can't stand that they don't never, you know, keep up with their inventory. That's, that's, that pisses me the hell off with Walmart. But, um, yeah. So I went to Target and I found one. I had to come back and get it. So I didn't even get a chance to do that because I didn't have my truck. I had my car. So... It's just been like a really long day. And then for me to sit down there and try to figure out how to transfer this over, like I tried everything, like everything. I put it in my iCloud, just everything. And it just, all the other videos that I recorded with this damn phone worked out perfectly. Like they went over. But for some reason, I guess because they were in HD, I'm just about to cry. But anyway, I did want to say thank you to everybody that purchased a wig at the wig sale. I had to go and mail them off today because, you know, yesterday was Memorial Day. Plus, I still have to sit at the computer and input all of the tracking numbers. And that wasn't even my fault. Normally, the post office lady will ask me, do you want the, you know, the tracking numbers to be emailed to you? I was like, yeah. She didn't even do that this time. She just bypassed it. And when I get them emailed to me, it's so much easier so I could just put them in my website and then be done. So now I have to manually put in all of these tracking numbers, and I'm pissed off about that. So I'm going to just make this really quick because I do need to edit this video. Y'all already know what to do for real talk. Let's just get into this. You know, yada, yada, yada. Huh? 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 What? Damn. 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 Hey, Miss April, how's it going? You are like my friend in my head, someone who I could call auntie. So I really trust and feel you will give me your honest truth and best advice or wisdom. You can call me Elsie for this video. I live in a townhouse complex in Indiana where I have been living now for well over five years. So I am very familiar with the other residents. Some speak, some don't. Well, I became friends or rather acquaintances with a fellow neighbor who we can call Sandy. I also have a daughter who is 17 years old, and she and I spend a lot of time together. Basically, I am a single mom. When Sandy and I met, it was at the mailboxes retrieving our mail. We spoke for a few minutes, and I welcomed her to the complex as she was fairly new. And this was the first time for me meeting her. From the short conversation we decided to hang out, I invited her over for drinks and, you know, grown woman stuff, some wine and snacks, nothing tough. Long story short, she came over a few days later, and I noticed she had bruising on her arms. Well, she had told me she got out of a toxic relationship, and I was happy for her. No woman deserves to be mistreated. I didn't get into detail because it was not my business, but we became kind of cool with one another. She would come over every few days to sit, sip, and talk with me, and I enjoyed her company as my daughter would either be at work a lot or with her friends or studying. So I enjoyed the girlfriend time. 
It started getting overwhelming though because she would pop up at all types of hours of the night wanting to talk and then it became borrowing things like, you know, normal things like sugar, bread, etc. But then it became a few dollars here and there. And then she started not wanting to, re to repay me back when the time came. I had to remind her of her latest debt, which she owed me, which was $80, and has been well over three weeks with no mention of paying me back. She was at my house one night, and it was kind of late, around 10, and I brought the payment issue up. I wasn't trying to offend her, but Miss April, I should not have to um, beat around the bush about my money that I work for. She hurried up and left once I mentioned it, and she said she would repay me by the end of the week. Girl, that we came and went, and I had not seen her for two weeks. The next time we ran into one another was again at the mailbox. Well, this time I was like, hey girl, I haven't seen you in a while, and I was wondering when you was gonna stop by and make good on that loan. Miss April, this woman got all mad and was like, you ain't even asked me how I've been. You quick to ask about money, but don't even know what I've been going through since you last saw me. She started raising her voice. I am not one for a show and embarrassing moments, so I let her know she was acting out of character, and when she gets a moment, I would like to speak with her and get my money back. I didn't think she would escalate matters by talking to neighbors about me, saying things like I'm a petty bitch and I'm broke, etc. Like, really? Where is this all coming from? Well, now it's been another week gone, and I'm on the way to the complex workout gym to work out. I walk in and Sandy is in there with a neighbor who I don't really know, but I have seen around. As soon as I walk in, all eyes are on me. Well, at least them two females, Sandy and the neighbor. I then begin to hear Sandy saying things referring to paying people back, how she don't bother with other females, all this unnecessary nonsense. And it all stems from my money. Like we have been cool for some months and now she's acting like this. It got worse. Like, now it's like she's been hyped up by her new neighbor friend, and she gets louder in the gym. And I'm ready to leave, because I am not here for the drama. I just want to work out and get my money back. I finally asked her, was there a problem, other than the fact that the debt she owes me, she can't pay back? Because other than that, what is the problem? Of course, it became a screaming match. She was doing the most screaming, mostly, and other residents were then pick, packing up their belongings and leaving. Security was informed, and she was asked to leave the gym. I was not. I was able to stay since I was not in part of the screaming match. I have been harassed by Sandy whenever she sees me, and honestly, I'm tired of her. I don't even care about the money anymore, but the disrespect I will not tolerate. I hear her walking by my townhouse, loud and obnoxious, talking mess. Like, it's starting to feel like she wants me to be scared of her, like she's trying to bully me. And that will not happen. But how can she get mad with me over my money? She has left notes on my car stating I better stop referring to her to other neighbors. Like, what the hell is she even talking about? And I'm really ready to go upside her head. Like, she and I were cool, and now she don't want to pay me back or respect me? From leaving notes to running her mouth, I'm ready to go upside her head. What would you do, Elsie? So, first of all, let me just say this, y'all. I don't really care about neighbors. I try not to be friends with neighbors. I don't make friends with neighbors. I rather, my neighbors don't speak to me. You can say hello and goodbye, that's it. We not gonna sip tea. I don't wanna be cool with you. I don't want you to think you can ring my doorbell whenever you want and come into my house, invite yourself over to my family cookouts. None of that shit. Just say hello and goodbye, that's that. I don't want neighbors being friendly with me. And you know what? I don't have a problem with that because the neighbors that I do have that live on the other side of me, his wife don't like me and that's cool because I don't like her anymore. We used to say hello and goodbye and hold a little conversation here and there. But because she assumed that my dog was shitting on her lawn and had her husband come outside and almost damn near verbally attack me, I had to go off on them. We don't speak, okay? Now the husband has apologized because first of all, for my dog to shit on your lawn, I'd have to step all the way on your motherfucking lawn for where the shit was. My dog leash is not that long, okay? Second of all, I carry around a dog bag with me. So I don't do things like that. Just because you see me walking my dog, there's a whole bunch of little dogs that run around in the neighborhood and other people. Let's not mention, let's not forget to mention how this neighbor, she's the one who lets her dog, her little dog run loose. 
okay? The her little dogs done shit on my lawn, and I watched them. And yes, I did ring the doorbell and let them know, because you're not about to accuse me of shit, and then you want to talk shit, accuse me of shit, and then your little dog come outside and shit on my lawn? Hell no, okay? That's when all the shit, you know, popped off. Then we got the neighbor across the street from me, the white guy, who I don't know, I just don't think he liked black people too much, as I am the only black family on this block. But I really don't think he liked us from the beginning, from the day we moved here. We have said hello to him several times, and he just looked at us like we were shit on the street. Until that one day when I was on the right side going down the street and had to pull over for a second, and he was coming up the opposite side. Well, I stopped to speak to my son, and I guess he felt the need to parked right in front of me with his motorcycle light blaring in my face because this was in the evening and wouldn't move out the way. Meanwhile, you got all the side room on the left of me to go past. And he couldn't say that he couldn't get past because the cars were passing me by. Man, that was the last, the first and the last time I ever had to tell that man to get the fuck up out of my way before I pop him up on my hood and he'd be like a deer with antlers stuck up on top of my truck hood. Ever since then, he doesn't speak to me. He don't look my way. If he see me coming outside and he got to go to the mailbox, he will cross the street over, okay? And that's fine. That's how I like neighbors. We don't have to be besties. We don't have to be friends. You don't have to be cordial to me. You even got to say fucking hello to me. That's how I keep it. That's like a job. The same way, if you got a job, we're not here to make friends. Bitch, I'm here to work. Just like I'm here to live, okay? So that's the problem. That's number one. I'm not trying to be friends with neighbors. But for two, when you invite them in and then you start allowing them to borrow things from you, then that's where it gets all twisted. First of all, here's the here's the, here's the messed up part. You don't never allow somebody to come to your house at all type of hours at night. That's one thing you don't allow to do. It's cool that you invited her and, you know, y'all had to sit, sip, and drink. You know, that's cool. Sip, sip, and talk or whatever. That's cool. But when she start popping up at your house at all types of hours, that's the disrespect. To me, that's disrespectful. Because you're not going to ring my doorbell whenever you feel like it. I don't give a fuck if it's in the afternoon. Did I invite you over here? You don't come over here unless I send for you, okay? Did we agree upon you to just stop by on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays? If not, then please don't ring my doorbell. Because I will open my door and talk to you from my doorway and not let you in. Or better yet, I won't open my door. That's the number one problem. And I hate to be like that, but... We neighbors, we not besties, we didn't grow up together, you ain't my family. You don't just ring anybody's doorbell and invite yourself over. People have lives and things to do. But here's the kicker, when you come over my house any time and hours of the night, you think that you're gonna sit and drink my wine up and sit your crusty, raggedy ass on my furniture and just talk to me? Girlfriend, no, no. Now, one thing, I don't mind loaning out some sugar or whatever, but better yet, please don't ring my doorbell for no uh, to borrow any type of foods. Because if I give you some sugar, bread, milk, or whatever, I really don't expect you to come back with it, okay? I don't even want yours, okay? I'm, I'm pretty sure I can go to the store and get me some of my own. But I'm okay with loaning that out. But when it comes to dollars and stuff, we're not going to do that. Now, see, there's a way to get around that. I'm sorry, honey, I ain't got it right now. That's the answer. No. I'm sorry, I just finished paying my bills. People get real comfortable with you, for, for one, when they're coming over at any time of night. But then when they start asking to borrow money and stuff, then they're getting overly comfortable. But this bitch, Sandy, did she really just throw a fit and get mad, big mad, and call you broke when, uh, let's remember, she's the one that fucking borrowed the $80 and catching a whole attitude? Sweetheart, let me tell you something. I'm not up with the Chick-fil-A's, okay? Because I don't really deal with a lot of females. Sometimes they get to be real Chick-fil-A-ish, real catty and disrespectful respectful, but you're not about to disrespect me where I live at, and let alone with the other bunch of cackling hands that live in the complex either. Now, one, the screaming matches, I can do without, because all of that screaming, that's just gonna give me a headache, gonna get me worked out, my veins is gonna pop out of my neck. While you doing that screaming, girl, I might just slap you upside your goddamn head, but... We don't want to get out of character for some low life, raggedy ass bitches. And she might not be a low life, but from the way she acting, you borrowing eighty dollars, you can't give it back. That's a mere eighty dollars. Like it may not be a lot to some people, but it can be a lot to some people. Like with eighty dollars, sweetheart, you could pay a bill, you can buy groceries, you could put gas in your car. There are a whole lot of motherfucking things that you could do with eighty dollars. Okay, I guarantee you, I can come with quite a few lists of what you can do with eighty dollars. But what you're not gonna do is be disrespectful. So here's the thing. Okay, what I would do in this case, now listen, for me, I would have let that bitch have it in the gym and would have let her know, is there a problem? Because you seem to be big mad because you're the one that can't pay me back my $80, okay? Here's the thing, you can keep that mere $80 because I'm not even worried about it. But what you won't do is disrespect me. That's how 
how you have to handle bitches sometimes because they feel the need to run off at the mouth so much that they feel like they can just be bullies to you, disrespect you, talk to you any old kind of way. And this is my thing. Just like that white man across the street from me who didn't want to speak to none of us as we spoke to him, I'm cool with that. But what he thought he was going to do is he thought he was going to, for one, bully me because I'm a woman, bully me because I'm a black woman. And I know this for a fact because that white man got an Asian woman. And I see them walking out in the morning or walking to the mailbox all the time. That man would be 10 yards ahead of her and she'd be all the way in the back with her head down. He don't even walk with her. So he don't have no respect for women, let alone a black woman. So what he thought he was going to do is park his fucking motorcycle right in front of my goddamn truck with the highlight with the beaming headlights in my face and think that I was going to move out his way when first of all you're supposed to be on the left side of the street because we're going opposite directions you just want to be an asshole to me but why would you even do that when my son and his friends are standing outside but why would you even do that because you don't even know me bitch I got New York plates on the back of my truck okay for when I first moved here this is when I, this was like several years after I moved here you're never going to fucking destroy destroying me and think you gonna have me move out the way. Man, I got out that goddamn truck real quick and let his ass know, don't you ever park your shit in front of my car, because if you don't get the fuck out in front of my truck, you gonna be on the hood. I will pop your ass up on that hood. This is how you have to handle people sometimes, just like that lady next door when she thought my dog shit on her lawn and sent her husband out after me, and I had to have him, let him have it, okay? And then after that, when I told her her dog shit on my lawn a year later, she said no, and I had to tell her to shut the fuck up. After that, that bitch won't even look my way. She did try to wave at me a couple of weeks back ago, but I just looked at her like... You, I know you're not waving at me because I give you one motherfucking chance and that's that, okay? So this is how you have to handle people sometimes. You might not have to get out of character. You may not even have to pop her upside her motherfucking head or mouth. But what you will need to let her know is this, sweetheart, you can have that mere little $80 because it ain't even worth it. But what you're not going to do is disrespect me. That's how you have to handle them. And if she try to get up in your face and put hands on you, then, Elsie... That's when you pop that bitch upside the head. Now, I don't like to be a snitch or nothing like that, and I damn sure don't like to run to the office and tell them, oh, well, this bitch is bothering me, but you're not going to put your hands on my fucking property, which means don't touch my car. Don't put your motherfucking note on my car. Bitch, don't even look at my car too hard. Don't even smell it. Don't even walk buy that shit, okay? But what you won't do is put your fucking dirty ass, non-paying ass hands on my goddamn car to leave a fucking note. Right then and there, she should not be touching anything of yours. So yeah, maybe I would go to the office and let them know, you know what? This lady's been putting her hands on my property, on my car, and if something happens to my car, it's gonna be at her fault and at yours. So I'm just letting you know, maybe you might wanna talk to that tenant. You've been there for five years and she's a brand new tenant. She's a brand new resident. I cannot stay Damn bitches that just move into the neighborhood and start running up at the mouth and ruin a good thing for people. You know what I'm saying? Just have a seat, bitch, and just sit down. Whatever it is, I'm pretty sure she can afford to live there, too. But maybe you have something, Elsie, that she don't... It seems like the first thing is common sense. Like, you know what? It's so sad when a female don't see that you got to stoop to their level just to make them understand that what they doing is wrong. Like... This young lady is in the gym, carrying on, acting up, belligerent, obnoxious, ignorant, causing a scene, you know what I'm saying, to impress. So as I was saying, it's just sad when you see young women and they don't realize that you have to stoop so low to their level just for them to understand where you're coming from. Like, I don't feel the need to come out of character with anybody. I'm just like, over all of that shit, like, I'm definitely not a punk bitch, and I'm not a chump, but I'm not about to lower myself for no foolishness. Definitely not for no ratchet ass, okay? And I say that because the, her whole attitude and so forth was just ratchet, like so unbecoming. You're gonna be in your housing development, your complex, in your gym, and you're gonna put a show on for everybody that's there. I don't know what color this woman is because she never stated it, but it doesn't even matter. But for you to have to put on a front and show out like that shows that you're not really ladylike for one. And for two, you just like the attention. I like attention too, that's why I get paid for it. But I'm not about to be nowhere out in public showing people my ass. Like, I don't even think, like, 
too much attention is that great for one, but to put out so much negative energy is just negative. And to get mad with somebody because they loaned you money and you can't pay it back, seems like there's an issue with you. Maybe you want to reflect on yourself. Maybe she wants to sit down and think about things, but it seems like homegirl is going through a lot of things. And what you really need to do, sister girl, is put a stop to it in a ladylike manner and let her know. Sweetheart, and, and, and I'm gonna say mere $80 because it may not be mere, but when you tell somebody you can keep that mere $80 because it ain't nothing, but what you're not gonna do is disrespect me, that's kind of like an insult because if you said that to me, I would feel like, oh, excuse me, but how can I get mad because I didn't pay you back that mere $80. So obviously it was an issue. That's how I would handle that bitch. I'm not, look, I'm about to be 47 years old in, on the 19th of June, okay? I ain't about to be out here fighting no bitches, especially over no money, okay? But, I mean, if you put your hands on my face or you come too close to me or anything that's not appropriate or acceptable, bitch, I'm gonna knock you upside your head. But I got grandkids and kids that I have to still be here for and to be, like, a mentor. Not even a mentor, but, you know, they look up to me. I'm grandma. I'm mama. I'm mommy. I don't have time to be out here with these young bitches or with these old bitches acting like a fool. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes some women just don't mature and they don't grow the fuck up. And Elsie already has a daughter who's 17, so she's of a certain age. You know what I'm saying? And who knows how old the other young lady is, Sandy. But the way she acting, she acting like she in her 20s. And even if she is 20, that doesn't make it acceptable to act like that. You're not about to disrespect me, especially around no other females, okay? That's why I say I don't do the chick fil A's because them bitches be acting like a bunch of caddies. For real. Too many of them chick fil A's. Just not cool at all. So don't get out of character with them. Don't let them see you sweat, sweetheart, but don't let that bitch irritate you. Like I said about your car and your property, she's touching your car. If she's putting notes on your car, that means she's putting them up under your windshield blades, which means she's touching your property. That's one reason right there why you can report her to the office for touching your property. Because if something goes wrong with your windshield wiper blades, well then who are we to blame for that? Or if anything else go wrong with your car, a scratch, a smudge of dirt, I don't give a fuck what it is. Who can we blame? And it ain't about being a snitch. It's about being responsible, okay? And like I said, let that bitch have her little mere $80 because obviously it's a problem. There's a reason why she didn't give it back to you. I will text her because you don't need to go knocking on her door. You don't need to go up into her face because she seems like she's nothing but trouble. But I will definitely text her and let her know, you know what, sweetheart? You are welcome to keep that $80. You are welcome to keep that mere $80 because I don't even need it. But what you're not going to do is disrespect me. So don't ever touch my car or anything else in my belongings again. And stay away from me, my daughter, and my door. Point blank, period. And that's that. And if she goes around cackling, well, you know what? After a while, with a cackling hen, it dies down. As long as they don't get any attention and they don't see people giving them attention, it dies down. Trust me. It does. Mm hmm Cackling hens, they get tired of hearing their own selves cackling. And they'll die down. So as long as nobody's giving her all that attention, except for those dumb asses that she's been hanging around with, then it'll die down. Don't give her no attention because she's definitely not worth it. Definitely not. So you guys, I'm gonna go. You know, that was the real talk for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I do apologize for being so brief, but you know, I just had to deliver my message. I love you all and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye. Oh, <laughs>